I preach. If I say something that you agree with, you say, I mean. Or you might say, amen. If I say something that ruffles your spiritual feathers, please understand that who God loves, God rebukes and chastens. So you might not be able in all places and at all times to offer an amen. Because God done messed around and told you something that is a little too personal for you to high five and share with your neighbor. Let me do this here. This is my moment with God. And so what you say in that instance is ouch. But you either say amen or ouch. But you have to say something. Because if you sit there quietly, I don't mess around and think that I've not done my job in communicating God's truth in your life. Yeah. thing because it, it is heavy enough to constrain you, but it is light enough to allow you to continue to operate in what God gifted you to operate in. And it's a strange thing that's happening in the body of Christ. I, I'm blessed to go out as you are and travel and be exposed to different things. And uh, it seems to me uh, that the church is in a critical impasse. And regrettably, a lot of us are not sounding the alarm. Uh, we're not sounding the alarm. And I'm saying, now, wait a minute, Lord. Why have you exposed the world to the church and the church to the world in ways that, quite frankly, we've never seen? So you got gospel artists that are in the secular arena. you got secular folks now that are gracing pulpits and platforms. And I'm saying, God, now, before I operate in a religious spirit that automatically condemns it, even before I investigate it, can I suggest to you I feel God, he left the residue, I'm telling you. And the principle is attributed to a philosopher by the name of Herbert Spencer. It is now debated as to whether it was Spencer that said it, but traditionally, this philosopher from the Victorian era by the name of Herbert Spencer said this. He said there is a principle that will forever keep you in everlasting ignorance, and that principle is contempt prior to investigation. What does that mean? That means I dislike you and I don't know you. That means I touch you and I never said good morning or good afternoon. And I reflect that there are people in our culture now that are operating under this premise. I don't like you because of your reformation. I don't like you because of where you come from. I don't like you because you're black. I don't like you because you're white. And the problem now is that none of this has anything to do with life in the kingdom. Now knows that God wants to release a greater weight of his glory. And so the only thing that he can do is distract the church from operating in that which God has now made available to us. And so he is bombarding us now with all manner of things that are trying to get our mind to drift. Because if we ever realize what God was offering the church, we would take our liberties and grab it. It's a little early, but my I asked you uh, to grab early what you need God to do. in the outcome. And so they have no vested interest in 
you being successful in ministry because they have not invested their time, their money, their prayer, or their efforts. So whether you make it or not, they have no opinion on the matter. But when you mess around and make an investment, oh, yeah. around, you will mess around and guard over your investment. You'll log on to your portfolio and access on a daily basis how it is that your investment is trending. And so look here. Oh, it's trending very nicely. I gotta hold on to it. And so God now that made the ultimate investment in humanity by offering his own body to be broken and his own blood to be shed. He said there is no greater investment that I can make than offering myself. I'm gonna purchase and buy their body. And so now God wants you to understand that because of the investment that I made in you, I now have to guard and hover over the investment that I made. So when God sees you coming, he sees the investment that's getting ready now to bring a return. I dare to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what he's trying to say is that every time God delivers a people, he delivers a people with an expectation. And that's why the said it this way, that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous hour. Look at your neighbor and say, you just ought to, you just ought to.
because the initial investment was looking for a return on the investment. So you, when you go through the wall, it will not overtake you. When you go through the fire, you shall not be kindled and burned. Because I made an investment and I want my return. Grab your neighbor, pull on them now, and say, God wants to return now. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Those that he was making an investment in. He watched their fee. And Peter now didn't understand the methodology of the man. Peter said, no, my Lord. You won't dare watch my fee. He said, Peter, if I don't watch you, then you ain't got no power in my friends and family offering. So Peter got the revelation. He said, y'all, I feel it now, Sean.
so we see the principal everywhere. He had, he had, uh, he had a board of governors. He had a financial board. Yes, yes. Called Peter James and John. Peter James and John were all in privy before the initial public offering. So it is not by accident when he decided to change everything and went up into the Mount of Transfiguration. He brought with him the inner circle that had the most skin in the game. Transfigured before him to show him that although I'm gonna be wounded for you, I don't want you to lose your mind when it happens because this is the necessary prerequisite for my stock. before the IPO. They messed around and started asking some crazy questions. I said, Lord, is it good that we be here? All right. See, every once in a while, God wants to bring you out of yourself yes. and speak to you about why the hell has been released against you to give you a glimpse of what your tomorrow is supposed to look like. Right. Now, now, I'm going to say this as I get ready to fire up the car. And uh, I do this at great risk because the prosperity gospel has made a mockery, uh -huh. even though everything about the gospel is prosperous. Amen. But I just need to declare this over this house. And you can do what you want with it. Your broke days are over. And he in essence says, God, 